Okay. So, I'm going to make a pretty standard, just basic uh, overall explanation of, of some of the, the starting points of, of modding Dark Souls 3. Um, just kind of talk about some of the basic modding tools and the basic like file types and file locations, that kind of stuff. Um, obviously there will be some stuff left out because I'm kind of just poking at the most basic of stuff. Um, but with that being said, we can go ahead and get started here. Uh, one of the first things in terms of doing modding is getting the mod engine download, which I'll put uh, in the description of this video. But what it looks like is right here. You just download this. It will be zipped beforehand, so all you need to do is just run it through uh, like 7-zip and just extract to uh, here. So you would just right click on it, 7-zip, and in this case it is telling me to compress, but let's see. Let's find something that, uh, yeah, this one. This one's not done done. So you would just go to it, 7-zip, extract to file name. What that does, if you don't know, is it just extracts it to its own folder on the desktop or wherever it is that you have it. So if you downloaded Mod Engine, you would just open it up, go into the file. Here's everything that you need in there. There's the Mod Engine, there's a README if you want to read it. There's the DI input 8 um, to make any of the mods that you install work, you would just take these two bad boys right here and you would come drop them into your game directory. So you'd go all the way up to your game folder, not the executable, just the game folder, and drop those both in there. As you can see right here, I have the I input. And then down at the bottom, there's the mod engine. The way the mod engine works, We'll give, a, we'll give a brief overview of that. The way the mod engine works is it will do a couple of things for you here. Like it'll keep you from being able to go online so it doesn't connect to their servers and give you a, a ban uh, if you're worried about that. Um, if you want to play online regardless, you can go ahead and just replace block network access equals one with zero and then save it. That's all you gotta do. Save file. This just sets it up to use an alternate save file so that when you do go back online it doesn't try and read from your modded files. You can change that to do that or not do that depending on how you have the number set here. I personally don't care, so I just didn't touch it. Files right here, this just loads, loads loose params. Um, not really too big of a deal. Um, if you don't know how that works, doesn't matter. Um, right here, load loose files, and then this one's honestly just the most important. Uh, this one right here, is the override directory being enabled or disabled, and then this right here is the override directory, which is just a file name mod. You can make the file yourself if a mod that you download already has that, that's totally fine. This is just telling you what folder it's going to be pulling from. So in my case right now, this is mod. So it's going to pull from this mod folder first. And then after it pulls from the stuff that I have in here, it'll then fill in the blanks essentially with the vanilla game um, assets and stuff. So that's kind of a rough go at how that works. Um, and then that leads us into UXM here. UXM is another program that you need if you actually want to be doing modding to your actual game files and stuff like that instead of just downloading stuff. The way that UXM works is it just unpacks, it's right here, I'll put that link in the description too. The way that works is it just basically unpacks the game from its you know base compressed form so that you can actually see the individual folders. The way it works, same thing as with the mod engine, you just extract it to its own folder, you open it up, you can open up the executable, you go to the executable path, you browse, it's really simple, you just go select your game executable, 
There it is right here. And then you would just click unpack. Unpacking literally just makes it so your game looks like this. It has all the individual files here so that you can actually look through them. If you didn't have it unpacked, these wouldn't be here. None of these would be here, except for the mod folder, which is you adding it, not the game. So that's pretty much how that works. It's pretty cut and dry, very straightforward, nothing crazy. But if you end up, you know, changing something that you don't like or whatever, you know, you can always just open up UXM, you can click restore, and it'll just put the game back all the way to its packed base version. It'll get rid of any changes that you made to those files. Um, I don't really recommend making changes to the files themselves, since uh, you can just make the changes in the mod folder and then have it use that as an override. So that way, if you decide, oh, I don't want these changes anymore, you can just take this and move it. There you go. Now the game doesn't have the changes. It's just going to pull from the base stuff. Oh, I want my mod. Put it back. That's it. Pretty straightforward. And then there is a program called Yabber, which is really important for actually getting in to those types of folders. It is literally just a program right here. Same deal. You know, extract it. Just a program. All it does is it will basically unpack certain file types like DCX, TPF, some other stuff like that. Um, so if you're trying to go in and view, you know, you know your your parts or something like that, you would just go in. You could click and drag it over to the Yabber executable, or you can assign it, you know, right here in your right click, and then just right click it. It'll then open it up for you, but that's not what this is about. We're not going to go through a big tutorial on how to use everything. We're just going to kind of explain what they do. So that's what that does. It'll open it up, and then you can repack that folder if you make changes inside of it. That's about the extent of what Yabber does. You then got Yapt. Yapt is a, another uh, program that you can open up. All it does is I have it open down here, but basically you would download it, go in, click on it, open it up. Same deal, extract this folder, blah, blah, blah. You can open that up. And then the first thing it'll have you do is select your data bin for the game. So what you do is you would obviously come over here, you would select the game that you're modding, Dark Souls 3. This does have Dark Souls 1, Dark Souls 1 Remastered, 2, 3, and Sekiro. What you do is you just come to open, you go to your game folder, wherever you have it at, and you would select data 0.bdt. This holds all of the in-game parameters. So, as you can see here, we already have it opened up. Once you have it opened up, come over here to the Edit tab, like import names. This is really important because if you don't do that, all these fields are going to be blank. They'll still control things, but they'll be blank and you won't know what they are. So you just make sure you click import names. You can go ahead and click yes or no. Really doesn't matter. It'll just pop populate all the fields. So we'll go ahead and do that. Whatever. The way that this works is it just pulls up all the parameters, how they work. Now, I'll do an individual tutorial on how Yapt works more in depth, but the way it works here in, in simple terms is here are all the parameters that control, say, uh, let's go to an MPC one, right? MPC parameters. The way that this works is it just has all of the MPCs in here. You know, all of them are in here by the row ID, blah, blah, blah. There's lap when he's in the drag heap in the first location, lap when he's in the drag heap in the second location, so on and so forth with all of them. You can look through all of them. There's Orbic when you first run into him in the Road of Sacrifices. There's Orbic when he is in the Firelink Shrine and when he is in the Grand Archives. All of these things. There's his phantoms. There's all of it. Oh, oh my microphone. Um, so that's all good and well in there. If you wanted to adjust 
L1 operated or whatever, you would just click on it and you could come over to the right here and change, you know, how many souls you get when you kill it, um, what item lot you get when they die. So item lot just controls what they drop when they die, that kind of stuff. Effects, all sorts of different stuff, which we can get into later. But the basis of Yapped is that it lets you control some of the game parameters. You can make the changes you want, go over here, click save, blah, blah, blah. Same thing, you can click restore to put it all the way back to normal if you really want to, if you're worried about, you know, oh God, I think I broke something and I want it to go back to normal. You can just click restore. So that's Yapped. And then there's DS Map Studio, which is an excellent tool same deal you would go download it from the link that i'll put in the description and open it up and you can open up ds map studio the way that this works is you just go in to it we'll launch it and then you can go up to your file or a project you would enter in your project name whatever you want to be project directory where you want these changes to go typically i just send them to my mod folder and then the game executable, same deal. You just pick the executable for Dark Souls 3. And then once it's loaded, it'll give you a list over here on the left of all the maps. They're all like MP slash 30, MP 31, so on and so forth up to like 50 something, 51 or 52, I don't know, something like that. And then you can just right click on one of those and load all of the assets in. Um, I'll do a tutorial on how to use kind of map studio in its basics you know once we get through just explain how they work um, this one's pretty simple you open up a map you can go and click on you know an asset or like an enemy say uh, and you can just duplicate it so if you want to you know make there be 20 of the fucking hollows right in the very beginning of the game that are guarding that S the ash and estus flask and just duplicate that enemy a bunch and just have them sit there, have there be a ton of them, you can do that. You can go in, you can change just where enemies are placed if you want to. You can uh, go in and just basically fuck with some of the models, move some of the stuff around. There's a lot more in-depth stuff to it, but basically it's just actually messing with the, the game world itself. And then basically those, those those are all of the types of tools for basic stuff. Um, I can go over some of the more advanced stuff, but I myself don't actually know a whole lot about the advanced stuff. I just started learning myself, and I didn't see a lot of tutorials for this kind of stuff. So I figured I'd throw my hat in there and try to help add to that list of tutorials, explaining how things work a little bit. Um, We'll go through the basic file types really quick for the game, just to kind of make sense of some of the stuff. So here's the game folder. If you have it unpacked, this is what it'll look like. You've got character folder here. This is where all the character models, like enemies, NPCs, all that kind of stuff. Those will all be in here. It's almost all, if not all of it, is DCX files, which you can use yabber to unpack and then get into if you so choose and then we got stuff like map this is what just holds all the maps holds the map data the map itself all the assets in it models like where that kind of stuff is at and located in those maps so that the game knows how to populate it that's basically what this is um we got menu menu itself holds uh, things like icons for your weapons, um, your armor, so like if you're looking at it in your inventory, it's got the little picture showing what it is. It has a bunch of that kind of stuff in here. So if you want to edit icons or um, things like that, you would come into here and you would come down to common TPF, DCX, unpack it, go through, look for what you're looking for. Which, again, I'll make a tutorial on how to do those things specifically um, but for now we're just explaining and then 
you've got the message one. This one is where pretty much any of the text, if not all of the text for end game stuff, ranging from things like item names or descriptions to NPC menu dialogue. Uh, again, this is mainly in the form of DCX files. You would just select your uh, I'm fucking blanking on it. You would just, your language, yeah, whatever. Um, and here is just the four, five different things here. The only ones that really matter are menu DLC 2 and item DLC 2. The other ones, if you make changes to them, they don't show up in the game because the game isn't pulling really from those at this point, at least in my experience so far. We can get into that another time as well. We got parts folder. Parts folder is where like all of the models, the 3D models and a lot of the textures attached to those models are gonna be for things like armor uh, and weapons. You'll see things like AM uh, down here, you know, that is arm pieces for armor. Uh, you'll see things like, let's see here, BD which is body pieces for armor. Uh, and then you'll see things like, I believe these are the face models. You can ignore those because those are annoying. See things like HD, which is head armor, helmets, that kind of stuff. And then there's another one, uh, LG, which is leg armor. So each of these correlates to a specific piece of armor in the game. Um, off the top of my head, I know that the 1950 part has to do with the knight armor. So if you were to go in and mess with this, you'd be messing with the knight armor. Uh, and then the L version is just the lower quality version for things like invaders and stuff that don't really matter if they're like super, super crispy because they're boggy looking invaders anyways. So the game gives them those to save resources. And then there is this, which is the data 0.bdt. Um, what can I really say about it uh, that I didn't say earlier? It just holds all of the, you know, in-game params for you to tinker with. Uh, it's openable via Yapt for you to go make changes to different kinds of things. Um, but I mean, yeah, that basically will be summing up just kind of like the base value uh like simple here's kind of how things work this is basically just an introduction to some of the simpler tools and some of the file types and, and what they mean and what they do so that later when i do a tutorial on how to make some of the changes if you've watched this you'll understand a little bit more than you hopefully did before you watched it, if you didn't already. But you will have more to come, so that's all for now. Thanks for watching.